What's up YouTube, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube here, and today I am going to discuss the three different kinds of Blue Eyes White Dragon cards and what I think is the best buy right now for the money. Uh, obviously the main three types of cards are the DDS, the Dark Duel Stories promo, the SDK, the Starter Deck Kaiba promo, and the LOB, the Legend of Blue Eyes first edition. Those are the big three in terms of Blue Eyes White Dragon cards. Now, interestingly, the DDS version has gone all the way from about 1800 a year or so ago in PSA 10, down as the months have gone by, down to 1500 to 1400 to 900. Now it's at about 8 to 900 range. The SDK, the starter deck Kaiba Blue Eyes White Dragon in first edition, those have been steady at around five to seven to eight hundred, more at about five to seven in that range. And the LOB in PSA 10, first edition Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon set, uh, ultra rare Blue Eyes is going for about eight hundred bucks now in first edition, maybe a little more. So the LOB and DDS versions are creeping toward about the same price. Now, interestingly enough, I've wanted to put a video on this uh, months ago. It probably should have because it would have actually been pretty accurate. I was never a fan of the DDS versions, for those who don't know. The Dark Duel Stories game for Game Boy Color. The Blue Eyes White Dragon, the Exodia Head, and the Dark Magician. They were the three promos for the first print wave of that game. After that, the second wave, you had the other three cards. Salamandra, Ciar Ciaru, that dragon. Uh, I'm not 100%, and the Salamandra, uh, Acid Trap Hole, um, sorry, Acid Trap Hole, Salamandra, CRU, those were the three promos for the second wave. So, as, as time has gone by with PSA cards, the DDS versions have gone steadily down, the Sardec Kaiba versions have stayed relatively the same, and the LOB versions have gone down as, as well, because the LOB PSA 10s, Used to be at about 1800, 1700, 16, 1500. Now they're about 800, as I said, 900. So, again, uh, my reasoning is plain and simple. I like the LOB Legend of Blue Eyes first edition for a few different reasons. Firstly, with LOB and Legend of Blue Eyes and packs and boxes in general, you don't know what you're going to get in the box. You're not guaranteed. A Blue Eyes White Dragon in your LOB box, first edition. However, with Dark Duel Stories and with Star Deck Kaiba, you are guaranteed to get the Blue Eyes White Dragon inside, as long as, obviously, for the game, you check the back, you know it has Blue Eyes in it. You're gonna get a Blue Eyes in the um, Star Deck Kaiba. You're gonna get a Blue Eyes from Star Deck Kaiba. And as long as you're careful with them, their odds are you're going to have at least a 9, a PSA 9, if not a PSA 10, straight from the box if you open it right then. Whereas with LOB and booster packs and booster boxes, sometimes the, the cards will shuffle around a little bit, and even if you open the car, even if you open the packs, even when you use scissors, they still could just shift around, get a little damaged and whatnot. In the centering, the centering on the booster box cards and booster pack cards were... I think a little worse overall than the Dark Duel Stories. I think Dark Duel Stories really nailed the centering on the majority because, you know, they're cut in sheets, the cards, right? So if a sheet is cut perfectly, then that means, you know, what, however many cards in that sheet were cut perfectly. And I think Dark Duel Stories really nailed it uh, when they were cutting their cards. But also, Dark Duel Stories has the glossy finish to them, those promos, the secret rares. They have the glossy finish unlike some of the regular cards, almost like a Japanese card, better card stock, uh, better just aesthetic feel, uh, better card quality, those promos, than the other cards. Um, so that's another reason why I'm a little skeptical of Dark Duel Stories, because they were cut so well, a lot of them were well-centered, a lot better card quality, so I don't know if I feel justified paying and dishing out that kind of money for a PSA 10, Considering they're all that and that, all not hard to, alright, forget that. Considering that they're really not hard to get at tents, let's just say that, uh, from the box, from the box. And of course with LOB, you're guaranteed what, two ultras a box? 
And with that, you have to compete with other cards like the Monster Reborn, like the Red Eyes, like the Five Pieces of Exodia, like Gaia the Fierce Knight, and whatnot. So the odds of you getting an, uh, a Blue Eyes from an LOB box are not that good, to be honest with you. The odds of getting a Blue Eyes White Dragon from the game, 100%. From the Star Deck Kaiba, 100%. So overall, let's say someone digs out, wow, you know, I found 20 Dark Dual Stories games hidden away in, in a storage unit or whatever. Uh, I just found them, I bought out a store. It 20. I bought out a video game store, and they had 20 sealed copies of Dark Dual Stories. What does that mean? There's 20 more copies of gem mint material blue eyes out there for the taking. That's going to raise the population, that's going to put more on the market, that's going to lower their value. Same thing with Seto Kaiba decks. If someone were to find 10, 20 of them, boom, and they put them on the market, all of a sudden the market gets flooded with them, and the price will go down because there's a lot more tens and whatnot out there, and there's a lot more people selling mint copies. Now, with the Blue Eyes, someone can find 10, 15 boxes of LOB first edition, but there's not going to be 10, 15 Blue Eyes White Dragons brand new on the market in Gem Mints. There might you might pull three blue eyes out of those 10, 15 boxes, and those blue eyes might be off center. Those blue eyes might be not in the best condition. But either way, the population of those go way down compared to the alternative. Now I think it's ideal 808. I think that was the store once about five six months ago. They were selling 15 copies, 20 copies of DDS promos of Exodia of Dark Magician of Blue Eyes. And they were selling them at pretty good prices, about 300 or 400 for the Blue Eyes. They were described as mint, direct from package. I don't know what happened there, but uh, I don't know if they inherited these games. I don't know if they came across these games. I don't know if they found these games just sitting there sealed. But of course, what happened, they sold all those copies. The people who bought those copies did what? They submitted them to PSA. All of a sudden, now you got 10, 10 15 more PSA 10s. Uh, out there and being sold a lot of people wanted to just quick sell it and make a quick buck But in reality what happens is everyone's doing the same thing and when everyone's doing the same thing Everyone's competing with one another right and they force the price down and that is where you're getting that price drop uh, so again, I think the LOB is the best option the legend of blue eyes one because it uh, And another reason too it is first edition. I mean some people don't care some people just think the other one looks better, the promos, and the start at Kaibo, because the artworks maybe as well, which is understandable. I do understand that, but first edition always carries a premium. People think of first edition, you know, they, they like the idea of first edition. That would be a second reason, but the third reason, and another more important reason as well, is that some people down the line eventually might consider doing a complete LOB set, Legend of Blue Eyes set, Hollow set in first edition. What would happen if they do that? Uh, they're going to need the blue eyes. They're going to need the red eyes. They're going to need the Exodia, whatever else they need. But they are also going to need that blue eyes. I can guarantee you that there's not going to be many people doing the Star Deck Kaiba set. There's Some people will do the DDS set, which makes sense. Uh, but again, when, when you're looking at these boxes, the odds of pulling a blue eyes from a box are pretty slim. The odds of pulling a Blue Eyes in Dark Duel Stories game, 100%. The odds of pulling a Blue Eyes in a Seto Kaiba First Edition Star Deck, 100%. So there's that answer. Um, then you have the future of potentially a, a set collector or something like that. That will ultimately cause prices to be going up because people are going to want it. Um, but again, even without the set collectors, I still think... Uh, that this is a much better buy. I think the LOB at 800 or 900 right now is a much better buy. I really do. Um, it is lower risk because, God forbid, again, someone says, oh, I found 30 boxes of Dark Duel Stories. Let's sell them all at Mint. There's 30 more Mint and Gem Mint copies out there, and the prices continue to flood. Flood the market prices continue to go down. Whereas, someone finds 30 boxes of Legend of Blue Eyes. Uh price won't really go down that much because a some people will keep it sealed b uh, some people will uh, not pull a blue eyes uh, and c again you're 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 banking that the fact that the blue eyes is mint to gem which it might 
honestly not be this the quality of the card is not the same as the dds card the dds cards came out almost virtually perfect right out of the box so that's where the you know difference is for me in terms of an investor and then so again that's my opinion and god forbid there is set collectors for the first edition lob set hollow set um that could happen as time goes on that's just another added potential, I feel like. Another added potential to pick up that LOB first edition Blue Eyes now while you can. Obviously, the stuff is not going to get opened as much as it was back then at those prices. The price on LOB should continue to rise on those boxes. And as long as that keeps rising, the prices of everything inside the box, inside the set, continue to rise. It is the first set. It's an iconic set. The set is named after Blue Eyes. So why not uh, use your money and think about uh, the LOB version, which a lot of people don't right now, in my opinion. A lot of people are in love with the DDS. Nothing wrong with the DDS. It's a beautiful card. It's a I love the secret parallel rares. They're fantastic. But from an investing standpoint, I don't know if that's going to bring you the best return for your money that a LOB first edition Blue Eyes and LOB cards in general will. Uh, so that's really all I have today, guys. If you agree, cool. If you disagree, cool. Post down uh, below in the comments section. I'm interested to see what you guys say. I'm open to actually agreements and disagreements because I like to see both sides of the story. Um, just to see where people are coming from and see what people think. So again, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I haven't done really a investing video in a little while. So it's been, it's been a little while. I do appreciate everybody again on YouTube for subscribing, for Instagram, for following. It's really great. It's really great. I get some great, great comments uh, on YouTube. I get some great messages, actually, private messages on Instagram. I, again, greatly appreciated, guys. Let me know what you're looking for. Are you looking for more investing? If so, what, uh, what specifically are you looking for me to talk about in terms of investing? If you're looking for... Um, PSA returns, they will be coming, uh, so that's good stuff, probably in like a month or two, so that's always great, and again, thank you again for everything, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Tube, signing out.